fourth. That time of the week again for Sturlow's wrap up. Nine rounds gone and we've got eight games to look back on. The man himself is alongside me. Peter Sterling, good to see you. And to you, James. Uh, 22 20, that was the score line. It was the big theme. Three of the games weekend. this weekend. Yeah. And our man David Middleton says, never been done before. Three score lines. I'm not surprised. Like that across a weekend. He so. would know. Yes, let's go back to the first one, shall we? Suncorp Stadium. We were there live and free Thursday night footy. The Broncos hosting the Bulldogs. And they got over the line by two points, albeit controversially. They don't get any closer than this game. Uh, finish there, the, the penalty goal in the final play of the game to win mm. it for the Brisbane Broncos, who... Again, found a way to win when things aren't going their way. They don't let the scoreboard tick up too much against them. They don't contribute to their own defeat very often. Because uh, this, this Bulldogs outfit was, was pretty good. I thought the change from Marshall King into the dummy half role was quite good. Matt Frawley's kicking game in the halves alongside Kieran Foran was better. But that was the moment there that certainly irked Dean Pay and cost the, the Bulldogs a chance to win that game. There was interference, no doubt, from Moses M. By the sin bin, he made no difference because... 10 minutes and only a second on the clock meant nothing. But the two points um, through the goal and lost on the competition ladder was a tough one for the, uh, the Bulldogs to take. I like the Brisbane performance, and I, I, I guess the big boost for them was that um, Andrew McCulloch mm. started this game. Now, we sat here a week ago wondering who they'd fill in that spot for the next two to four weeks. But just his presence being there, they didn't have to make other changes. They didn't have to put a back rower in to play out of dummy half at all. And he looked, uh, he looked fine, plenty of strapping on him. But when he's in the side, they look much different and it takes pressure off the halves. But there were a couple of moments in this game, not the last one that I, uh, you know, I think Dean Pay, I can understand from his point of view, wasn't happy with that call. But to me, the bigger call in regards to one that I thought was wrong was the Asako knock on. Yep. Now this is earlier in the game, in, in the second half. They lead by two to Bulldogs. That's a knock on. I don't care what they come out and try to defend that that ruling. It is a knock on every day of the week. The ref was quick to say it wasn't. Straight away you know, well, indicated got, it went back. He got it wrong. Yep. And Asako, the man himself, knew he pulled up. He knew he'd Good knocked point. on. Now from that, Josh Morris was penalised in the next set for I thought a, a fairly tough call as well, um, bumping a chaser on the kick. And then the, the, the Broncos kicked a goal to even up the scoreline instead of the Bulldogs down the other end of the field attacking. It was a real turning point. Uh, tough night for the Bulldogs, good win for the Broncos. Uh, Pete, the early kickoff on Friday night. The Bunnies bouncing back from a narrow loss to the Broncos the previous week. 36 18 victors over the Newcastle Knights in Newcastle. Even dis This is despite a standout performance by Caelan Ponga for the, the host. Oh, he was fantastic in a beaten side. And they got away to that 12-point lead early on and you thought maybe South Sydney in their current vein of form would run away with it. But to the Newcastle side's credit, mm. they got back into the contest. Uh, but I'm really liking what I'm seeing from South Sydney. They, they throw a lot at the opposition when they've got the football. They have the most potent left side attack with uh, the success they're having down there. But it's, it's not all structured play from South Sydney. I like what Seabold has done coming in and taking over this team. Mitchell Pearce, um, again, not there um, for an extended period. So we've got to get used to Newcastle being in those positions without his ability to steer them home. Ponga has taken up that role beautifully. Some of the passes he threw, like, we know he's a fullback who's evasive. We know that he quite defends very well. But his passing game is as good as any half running around. So it was wonderful. A bit of a blow for Newcastle. Uh, they could have led in this game in the second half if Ken Seo just puts the football down. Now, now he's a good finisher, and his, his stats say that the amount of games he's played and the tries he scored correspond very nicely. But you can't make an error like that. He allowed the, the chaser in Angus Crichton to get too close. When you get over the line, you just the first thing you've got to do is just get the football on the ground. Yeah, they missed the chance of going into the lead. South up the other end. And, and the mentality of the game changes, James, under those circumstances. Spot on. Hey, we were there live and free, or live and freezing, I should say, <laughs> uh, in Bathurst on Friday night. The Panthers and the Cowboys, 26-20 North Queensland. Boy, uh, didn't they need that one as they head into camp ahead of a match against the Tigers. Uh, the Panthers, though, big comeback in the second half. I thought it was a wonderful game. Really aggressive, really physical, really competitive. At 20-0, you thought, well, you know, North Queensland in this vein could, could run up a big scoreline. But to Penrith's credit, they scored the try just before halftime through Tyrone Phillips. And they made a charge in the second half. They were coming to get them. So North Queensland had to pull out all stops, which they did. Tamalolo was fantastic. Matt Scott, easily his best game since coming back from injury. Yep. Michael Morgan looked better. And Lachlan Coote, who I actually called for maybe to be moved and, and had Michael Morgan back there, was wonderful. And his left foot kicking games took so much pressure off Jonathan Thurston and co. that they looked really good. 
but I don't think many admirers lost for this Penrith performance. The thing that I really liked about North Queensland, I thought they'd been predictable with their attack this season, but there was this play, this penalty that they were awarded 30 metres out, and they put on a set play straight away. Now, in the past, I think that they would have worked one or two in for a set play, but they went bang, and they also knew that they were going to the vulnerable side of the Penrith defence, where a lot of tries have been let in, down where they've got Isaiah Yeo defending alongside James Maloney. So to me, that was, again, just a sign that they've thought about their attack, they've come up with something different, and they were prepared to throw the football around a lot further out from the attacking 20. Uh, let's go to Saturday, uh, Pete. We backed up from Bathurst to watch this one. The Canberra Raiders up against the Gold Coast Titans. Comprehensive 32 points to 18 win here for the host. Starting to show some very good signs heading into the mid-season. Yeah, won four of their last five, but uh, they were aided with a really poor start from the Titans. We saw Soliola, how easy that try was in the mm. first two minutes. That was after Ash Taylor had kicked out on the full to start the game. When you are the Gold Coast Titans in the situation you're in, you've got to start really well and do everything right. And they didn't do that. And once this Canberra Raiders side gets on a bit of a roll, there's a lot of points in this team. And I still think they can get a lot better. I think they can be a real force in the second half of the competition. Gold Coast Titans have got concerns, uh, injury problems. They finish with nobody on the interchange bench in this game. Bryce Cartwright is not a 5'8", and I don't know what Garth Brennan does about that because Kane LG hasn't been particularly good there in the halves alongside Ash Taylor. So some real headaches on the, on the Titans' um, horizon at the moment. Uh, Auckland was the scene for the match after that. The Warriors putting on a show against the Tigers' side, Pete, that's now lost three on the trots. Yeah, and this is the biggest loss easily. The only the two previous losses were by two points, so the magnitude of this victory was a bit of a concern. But you know, let us point out that they, they were without two men for ten minutes. They had two synbinics. And you can't win football games, especially against a side like the Warriors, when you, you know, you're down to 12 men for 20, mir- 20 minutes a quarter of the game. Uh, the Warriors had all the running in the first half, probably a skinny lead at half-time, which would have given the West Tigers you know, some hope going into that second 40. But in the end, they ran away with it. problem for the Warriors is that they picked up some key injuries out of this game to Johnson, to Isaac Luke and to Adam Blair. So um, they'll need to, to call on their, their reserves in the coming weeks. Mason Lino obviously comes in for mm. Johnson. And Carl Lawton scored two tries. He would come in for Isaac Luke. Uh, the Parramatta Eels had a chance to get off the bottom of the ladder on Saturday night, Pete. Uh, they almost did miraculously, but look, it was all one-way tra- traffic for over 70 minutes. Cronulla eventual winners, 22 points to 20. I thought they were pretty poor, Parramatta. And this is a, a, a Cronulla side that went in without Luke Lewis, Paul Gallant, mm. Josh Dugan, and lost Wade Graham after 30 minutes. So there was an opportunity here for Parramatta to keep that run going. They got found out so many times defensively from structured plays. I think the scoreline flatters them. Three tries in the last six minutes just made that scoreline look better than it actually was. But I, I thought defensively they were poor and with the football they didn't throw enough again. I keep saying it about Parramatta this season that they, they, they don't make the opposition have to make decisions enough def- defensively. Mm. Now, they did have a chance to go into Golden Point. Uh, Mitchell Mazes had this from the sideline. He actually struck it very well and it was pretty similar to the kick he had to nail to actually get to... To as close as they did before uh, the 22-20 scoreline. But uh, again, I think Parramatta had a lot of work to do. Scoreline flattered Cronulla. Cronulla, brave, um, down on troops. A really gritty win again. Sunday afternoon, let's head there now. Cogra, 19,000 uh, there to watch. The two best teams in the competition go head-to-head. But now we've got one very clear premiership favourite, you'd have to think, Peter Steele in the Dragons. 34-14 winners. This coming off a, a storm performance last week where they put 40-point 40, 40 difference between them and the Warriors. It's a big, big win, isn't it? A lot of expectations there. Plenty of, of red and white jerseys in, in the crowd and they had a lot to cheer. Uh, the Melbourne Storm, I thought, defensively, nowhere near as good as what we would expect from them. I'm going to point out a couple of tries they conceded in just a moment. Um, and there was that controversial... Uh, no try where the play the ball infringement counted against Melbourne despite the fact they should have been given the advantage. But that takes nothing away from this Dragons performance. They were excellent. A continuation of the good form in regards to defensively they're very strong and with the football they mix structure and ad lib play very, very well. They've got a lot of skillful players in this lineup. But just have a look at these two tries that Melbourne concede here. The first one, Cameron McInnes out of dummy half. Now Billy Slater is to the right of the play the ball almost obscured. Look at him take off there and Cameron McInnes just run into that yawning gap. It's very unmelbourne like I, I've got no idea why Billy had to get across the other side so mm. quickly. Cameron Smith actually didn't get to marker. He was injured. So 
I don't know if that had a, a ramification in regards to Billy's decision making, but boy, it made it easier for Cameron McInnes and good vision for him to see that, as was the case on this occasion for Tim Laffey as well. Now here, just watch Will Chambers overchase dummy half, and the first defender is Felice Cafusi with all the hair. Now he goes back almost to the line, and Chambers by overchasing, it opens up a three on one down the short side. Craig Bellamy very, very disappointed with Felice Cafusi's lack of effort there, and Will Chambers making a decision for the opposition by racing out when he didn't have to. So a, a couple of areas in the game that, that Craig Bellamy will look at, uh, they'll come back hard from that, but but boy, what a what a confidence builder for the St George yeah. Illawarra side. Looking very good. Good luck to Paul McGregor dealing with this origin period coming up without half his team. Uh, the Roosters and the Seagulls uh, now biter to finish off round nine of the competition. 22-20 winners over a manly side desperate, uh, but in the end going down now five straight losses. Please. Yeah, they, they were wonderful in defeat, weren't they? Mm. And um, under the duress that the club's been under for a couple of weeks now to come up with that performance and almost knock over the tricolours was, was great. Um, still making my mind up about the Roosters. They got the job done. They won it by that scoreline, but um, I, th it still looks like there's a lot of improvement in the team. The one thing that the Roosters have going for them is defensively they're, they're wonderful and on their own line almost impenetrable. Uh, and I think this Victor Radley tackle on Dylan Walker sums up how they are on their defensive line. He's going to <laughs> score. He's a big man, Dylan Walker. Very solid player. He's got good speed. And Victor Radley comes across and absolutely nails him. And that was reflective of, of just how, how well they defend their own line. Um, a late flurry from the, the, the Seagulls. Uh, Dahlia Cherry Evans puts up a kick right at the end there. And this is how close they went to scoring. 22-20, that's a missed conversion early in the game. For their first try. And you just think, well, yeah, he, he wouldn't miss another one of those again for seasons and seasons <laughs> to come. Yet another 75 minutes down the track, you look back and say, well, it was costly. Yep. So, um, gallant, the, the manly side, question mark still over the Roosters, and I didn't like the officiating in this game. This was a match that was building to a crescendo, and the amount of interruptions the first for, half. I think, nitpicking Ugh. from the officials in this game is is a blight on the game. You know, I, I've been for the way that our officials have, have, have blown the whistle, but too many games as a spectacle are being spoilt by penalties that do need to be given away. You're not alone in that feeling. Peter Stilling, as always, good to catch up on a Monday. Thank you, James. At Stilling's wrap-up, nine rounds gone this week. We're heading to Leichhardt to kick off the 10th round. The Tigers play host to the Cowboys. See you then.